Folks, how's everybody doing? Going into August of 2021. First things first, we're just going to have a little chat today. A little throwback in time. A little reflection, a little appreciation today. So, on the backs of the new MetaZoo launch, it, in the la it's been a wild ride the last few years. And, you know, I think it's important for me to give a little perspective on how I see things and how much I like to believe in the underdog. I love the all hail the underdog type of approach. The people who said it couldn't be done. The people who always just are negative and this and that. So, you know, it's just, I don't know. I always believed in that. And I know some people call it American spirit, but I think it's more of a human spirit around the world for my international viewers. But it's one of those things where, you know, I love the story of a normal person who literally just grows up with nothing type thing and just shakes the system, you know? So, um, I think you guys appreciate this. So I'm going to show you guys a nice picture. This was a picture of me, um, out of probably around just out of high school or maybe senior year, first year of, uh, doing automotive. Cause I didn't really want to go to college. I didn't, my family didn't expect me to go to college. I barely graduated high school. And, uh, this here is a picture of, of me kind of learning automotive and uh, working on vehicles and learning a lot more of the mechanics to be more of a trained technician and all these stupid AOC certifications and learning the details and really getting into the nuts and bolts of the of how uh, the automotive industry and mechanics worked. Learning about the tools, learning about the brands of tools, the specialty tools, the types of vehicles, how to read the vehicles, pull codes, and actually dig into things, diagnostics and all that fun stuff. And, you know, it's just... It's made me really appreciate that any regular person can just surprise everyone, you know. So, and that's one of the reasons I, I, I'm a big fan of a lot of these new startups and card games out there, you know. I'm a big fan of the flesh and blood, what MetaZoo is trying to launch now and see where they go. In many other card games, I get contacted all the time. For potential new startups and everything. And I apologize. I can't respond and handle all of them and reply. There's just too many. But, you know, like right now, I'm looking at a couple other card games. And uh, I've been getting a lot of contacts on a few of them. Some were on Kickstarter. Some have been around for a few years. Uh, I've been getting more contacts on a card game called, I think it's, uh, um, I remember we were doing the Exodus. Which apparently is making a new card game, or a new, new set from the brother and sister. I've always been a fan of that. I always just wish they kind of go a little further and get kind of go to the next level. Um, also, another card game I've been getting a lot of contacts on to research and look into is Genesis. And then there's another card. There's a couple of them on the radar. I've been kind of, you know, have I, I have some of the products some of these companies have sent to me. I apologize. I haven't probably responded to most of them. But I've kind of play tested looking at some of the cards, having kind of giving them out to some local people and some friends and family I trust to kind of do some evaluation and pros and cons. And But the point of this video is that you know, you know, magic's in a situation, I know a lot of you don't agree with it, but it's, it's too big to fail. It, it's, even it, if it stops making new cards and stops selling or whatever, it, it's, you can't fail when you've already made it. You know, there, it's already done. The old, the old magic and the original Pokemon, it's museum level value, quality, scarcity, and rarity. It's already there. Now, will all the magic cards and all the Pokemon cards be worth something in the future? Who knows? Probably not. But... The sealed products, the certain originals and original variants and the original alpha betas or the first editions are always going to be very special and become historical. You know, now we have, you know, MetaZoo. You know, being able to do this, the, the MetaZoo launch with this, you know, actually having a really cool Rudy card is, I think it's just, it's such a cool thing. And just so you guys, if you want to see it, this was the original artwork that was done for the, uh, the MetaZoo card itself. And um, it's really cool. It's just, you know... And to be able to tie things together and have fun and really just push for the underdog. To see the regular everyday person break that mold and to let people know around the world that, you know, that kind of dream, American dream, that passion, that culture, it is it is still alive. It's not talked about. It's not really front and center. None of, you know, the, the, our culture and social media doesn't applaud. People aren't happy for other successful startups or companies or individuals. We are not wired, and social media is not engineered, to be happy and proud of accomplishments and positivity. We thrive 
on seeing scandals and failures and what LGS is, is evil or, oh, is it a scalper alert? You know, we thrive on these negative things, but there's so many amazing things out there. And I just, I have always had a soft spot and because I understand what it's like to be the underdog. I understand what it's like to be, you know, the reason I showed you that picture, uh, a family uh, member found that old picture of me when I was trying to become a technician, a mechanic, out of high school. Because, um, you know, I barely got my C's just to get out of high school. C's get degrees and graduate. And, uh, you know, everybody was always, you know, I used to, you know, lie in high school. And, you know, when they go around the room in your senior year and everyone says, oh, what college are you going to go to? What college are you going to go to? And I just made up a college name. I had no plans. I didn't think, you know, I just, in my family's like, well, he likes cars. And, you know, at the time of Fast and Furious and tuning and nitrous and turbos and all that stuff was the hot thing. And, you know, I was, I had a passion for it and I really was fascinated by mechanics. So, you know, I kind of just started working on cars. You know, I've waited tables and did the restaurant stuff at night. And I thought maybe transitioning to a career in mechanics was a future for me. Um, I still enjoy it, but I learned there's a difference between having a passion and a hobby versus actually having a career of doing something. It, it changes the mindset and how much you enjoy it. And to see that old picture of me and like what I came from and where, you know, how I started that and how I didn't have anything. It was just to where we are today in 2021, you know, even if one person watching this video realizes that, look, if a dude in Jacksonville, Florida who barely graduated high school, who didn't have any money and was working on cars and getting every little couple hundred dollar paycheck to buy a few tools for my toolbox to buy more cars, you know, if I can do it, anyone can do it. There was nothing exotic and special from me. I didn't come from the, you know, that hedge fund Wall Street. I didn't, I wasn't a, unfortunately a trust fund baby or anything. I would have liked to be, as we all would, that'd be awesome. But unfortunately it didn't work that way for me. And, um, but it's just, it's a bizarre, bittersweet thing to come this far. And, you know, it, it's made me a little philosophical because now you have this huge successful launch of MetaZoo, which I thought it was going to do okay, and I'm cautiously optimistic, but I didn't expect people to be this passionate about MetaZoo. It, it really, it, it surprised me. It shocked me. It really, like I even contacted Mike, the, the creator of it, and I said, dude, even I think I underestimated the fan cult following that, I mean, the passion that people, I mean, the amount of people, like, in families and patrons are like, dude, Rudy, me and my family and my kids, we, it's like a great entry-level card game. You know, Flesh and Blood's too adult-like for my little kids and too complicated like Magic, but, you know, the, the Meta Zoo and Pokemon universes, they just love it. And to see that, you know, families can actually, like, play a game and it, it, there's a niche in the market that this really fits, and it's a really cool thing to see that in an era where people aren't outside riding bikes. People aren't outside playing, well, I used to play like street hockey and, and rollerblades in the street here when the, in the 90s, and you know, people aren't doing that anymore. You know, I don't see that anymore. You know, everyone's just glued to some sort of smartphone, cell phone, computer, tablet, screen, linking to be some social media thing, and trying to impress other people on the internet that you'll never even meet. But you need some sort of validation of things that don't matter. And it's made everybody just very, it's rewired all of us. And I just, I just want to make a video today that, you know, the underdog story and the ability to do something is alive and well. It can be done still. It's not easy. It's small businesses are mostly being just nuked and wiped out. Making money and capitalism is, is just frowned upon in this whole culture of that stuff. Everything needs to be free cheap, you know, nothing should be worked hard and earned, you know, I hear all that. And I know how some people are very passionate about things being cheaper or free or card values or prices or evil investors and all this, you know, the same old stuff we've talked about for years. But, you know, I just want people to be aware that I do still believe the majority of people are willing to work hard and they do want a better future. I believe the majority of people still have that kind of wake up in the morning, they want to better themselves, their family, and their financial future. I do genuinely believe that that is still alive and well. It's not cool and sexy and fun. And, you know, videos like this aren't going to get the views compared to the other videos. I can make videos on this channel about drama and hot magic news that'll hit 50 to 100,000 views in a week. 
a video like this will probably be 10, 15,000 views. In other words, it'll be like, you know, which is still a lot of views, I'm not complaining, but compared to other topics, it's not going to get discussed and really viewed. No one's, it's just, that's just because that's how the YouTube algorithm, the system in the world is in 2021. It's harder than ever now to start a YouTube channel. It's almost impossible to start a successful new business. And if you do and you make money, they come for you with pitchforks. Because the mom and pop business, again, any form, if you make money, then you're evil or it's too expensive or it's a rip. You know, you know, whatever terminology or synonym you want to use. But, you know, I still believe in it all. I still believe the future is bright. I believe there's tremendous opportunity all over the place. But I believe people need to rewire. And the public needs to understand that. It's not that the world is crashing and burning. It's that the world has evolved. And if you don't look in a different direction and you evolve with it, what you are looking at will look like it's crashing and burning. It'll look like the world is ending. It'll look like there's a recession and a crash. But if you, it's not that things are crashing and burning. It's that the flow of money and business has shifted. And if you don't shift with it and you don't evolve with it, you may not like it. I may not like it. Look at you, Amazon. You know, but you have to accept and acknowledge the direction and the trend is your friend type of attitude. And, you know, and I just believe in the creativity and the passion that humans find a way. We're resilient. All of us. We're creative. We all want, to, we all want certain things in this world for either ourselves or families and all. Um, a lot of people go about it in a very illegal, wrong way or theft or danger or hurting people. But most people don't. And unfortunately, you know, the news media is only going to publish in front page things about that one tenth of one millionth of one percent of something bad that happened. But no one's going to talk about probably the millions of positive, amazing stories that people do all over the world every day. No one talks about that. The little things that happen, everything from just grocery stores to gas stations to regular stores to retail and people clocking in and all these people. Millions, if not billions of people. How many people are on the earth? Like three billion people now? Is it three and a half billion? There's hundreds of millions of people who do positive things all around the globe. But if you discuss that or post success of somebody else or a new card game or a local game store somewhere, nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to know about it. But of course, if there's a story about an LGS that broke the rules... They, they, they are, they are, they fake the WPN, uh, wait, there's no, is there tournaments? That doesn't exist anymore. Um, they, I don't even know. They, they faked there's some LGS in, I don't know, Colorado or Minnesota got in trouble or in Wisconsin or Michigan or New, somebody, did you hear that LGS? Um, they, they, I don't know, they sold their promo cards or their WPN exclusives, uh, on eBay and they told their customers that they didn't get any and they hosed their customers locally. Then you know, a story like that will like go viral and get like front page and everybody will jump on and grab the pitchforks and they'll line up in Taco Bell and sling the hot sauce and but then you know the other 800 stores that did the right thing and you know congratulate everybody or gave good prices or good service or even fair price even even full MSRP $140 for a uh, Strixhaven draft box when they give them a little buy a box promo and they give them a free drink for coming in and you don't hear about that you know, that, that, that's, and there's so much of that. And there's so little, really. And the reality is, it's the same thing when people contact me. You know, Rudy, I've got this you know, flesh and blood alpha. I got a case of it. I was going to put it on eBay for like 15 grand for four alpha boxes of flesh and blood. But I just, I'm, I'm going to ship it and someone's going to return it in the box. I'm going to open the return box and it's going to be filled with Pikachus. And it's not even going to be first edition Pikachus. It's going to be like Ponies the Gathering. The, no. Crap, I ruined that. Ponies the galloping. Actually, that's worth money, though. You know, and I tell people many times, like, look, you know, hey, if you want to sell it to me for, you know, 50 cents on the dollar and you want a safe, easy out transaction, hey, I'll work with you and make a fun video. You can have peace of mind. But remember, the reality is most people on eBay and TCG Player, they're not looking to hose you. Not all this stuff. And, of course, one bad story. I remember that Black Lotus story uh, a few years ago or something. About the guy shipped a, was an unlimited or a beta, a white border, unlimited, uh, unlimited white border Lotus. And it was like a fake card or got swapped out or who, who the hell knows what happened with that thing. 
But I look at that, and like that one story is like the story you heard around the world of why everyone shouldn't do this or shouldn't do that. Well, what about the other 999 stories of people buying and selling and trading sealed boxes and Power 9 and, and bricks of revives and, you know, Urza's box? What about all these stories? That there's no problems. Whatever happened, you know, all these people buying and selling boxes of this and that and these six-figure transactions, you know, and you don't hear about it. But guess what? That one little story, oh, that's why you never get a part of magic. They're all scammers. They're evil. You know, and it's like, no. You know, to defend magic, that's not true. I mean, the amount of real people in Magic, and the amount of real people in Pokemon, in Yu-Gi-Oh, in Digimon, in Dragon Ball Super, in Final Fantasy, Force of Will, in Weiss, in MetaZoo, in Flesh and Blood, and you just, could be, you just keep going. Most of the people in all of these worlds are, are, are fun, cool people like you and me. They just have a passion for cards. And they, have, they, get, they take it personally and emotionally if they see some store selling too cheap. Or too expensive, or they didn't give out a, a promo, or they didn't give out enough promos, or that you know, somebody else bought them out and they flipped them on eBay, and all the other customers couldn't get it. You know, whatever. There, there's there's ways to spin everything, and that's the point of this video, is that you know, the Meta Zoo story, the Flesh and Blood story, and God knows what else is going to come in the future. These are stories of regular people who had some had a dream, and they were cliche, they were cheesy. People made fun of it. People bashed it. And guess what? People still bash it. Still make fun of it. It's still a scam. I've heard it all. You know, I've heard everything from, you know, dude, guys, guys, MetaZoo is literally a bunch of middle schoolers painting these cards, and then literally they're given like a taco as compensation, and they're just making hundreds of billions of dollars, and literally the creator of MetaZoo is going to shoot himself in space in a penis-shaped rocket, just like Jeff Bezos by next month. What are you talking about? What penis penis rockets space? Because Metazoo middle middle school. Like, what are you talking about, Rudy? Did you hear? Nobody actually plays Flesh and Blood. It is an international currency fraud scheme where the same one box is moved between investors through cryptocurrency through the Silk Road back page third floor Rudy basement. What? Wait, I, there's so many things. I've heard so many things. It's I, I can't. You can't. I mean, it's easier. To report on the, what happens in the real world than it is to make stuff up. Because the real world, you can't write content that good. It's always better than the fake world. It, that's just the reality of life. So that's all. I, I want to make a fun video. I just want to talk to everybody. You know, it's a special moment. We got a new card game. You know, MetaZoo officially entered the world. And people seem really happy. And yeah, I sold out of all the kits really quick. And yeah, there's a handful of the patrons that are already flipping them on eBay. And they're going to probably 2 3 X their money. I've, I've heard that people are putting the Rudy kit not even 24 hours later. They paid $4.99. They're selling them for $800, $1,000, $1,200. And they're making free attendees. Am I upset about it? No, not really. Am I happy to see that there's activity? Am I happy to see that some people make money or some people are scalping? I don't, it's the free market. I'm not going to police the free market. The market's going to do what the market's going to do. If in a week from now, the Rudy kit for $4.99 tanks to $0.49... Cents, and then all the patrons lose their money? Well, that means the market is not happy with MetaZoo, and the game will probably collapse. Well, if that's not happening as the filming of this, the market's going to decide for all of us. No one person can control market caps and market sizes this big. It's just, no matter how you feel about it emotionally, it's just not real. So, going into the end of 2021, what a ride. 2021's been a wild year. Starting off with the crazy stuff and the GMEs and AMCs and rocket emojis, Wall Street bets. You know, everything, the Pokemon thing. And then we had the crypto sell-off in May, which sparked the bear market and collectibles. And now everything's kind of leveling back out. I'm not seeing price declines anymore. We're seeing just calmness, which is a very healthy sign. And I don't know where things are going to lead to the end of the year. There's a lot of speculation. There's a lot of behind-the-scenes deals going on. I have probably, as of the filming of this video, probably 15 to 20 pending collections in transit heading to me, being audited in different phases of the process. There's a, some are really cool, some are big, some are just a couple cards. You know, we got a lot of moving parts, and it'll be very interesting, and I still believe the future is bright, and I believe everything involved with collectibles, these card games, no matter how people feel about the future and digital and Skynet and aliens and Terminators, you know, there will be a market, and the world of cardboard will push forward. No matter how you feel about digital paper, this and that, and it, it will be a thing. It's not going anywhere. 
the powers that be, the machine goes burr, and I still think the future for collectibles is extraordinarily bright. Who knows what the short-term swings and bumps and crashes are going to be, but the future for all this stuff is very bright. And I believe in it, and that's why I'm sticking with it, and I want to be a part of these other new card games. Because, you know, I would rather be the guy that said, you know what, I'm going to try being a part of Flesh and Blood and MetaZoo. And you know what, if they both fail, you know what, make fun of me on the internet. That's the thing Rudy pumped and dumped him, and he hosed everybody. You know, I'm okay with that, because you know what, I tried. And if it doesn't work out, and all, everything goes to zero... Make a Wikipedia page and say, that's the guy I put my face on there with the haircut. Say, that's the guy who didn't buy haircuts, sold a bunch of product, pump and dump, all went to zero. And you know what? That's fine. I'm okay with that. Because there's no way in hell I'm not going to try and then just get older and have all these regrets of saying, man, what if I did that? What if I tried that? What if I went there? What if I asked her out? What if I tried that job? What if I actually tried this business? What if I took that chance? That is more powerful and valuable than failing. Losing money, you're being made fun of, all that stuff, and regrets. You know, regrets, that scares the living shit out of me. Losing money, prices going down short term, things like that, who cares? That stuff does nothing to me. I don't care if Monarch goes to a penny. Boy, that'd be great. I'd buy every box. But you know, at the end of the day, that's what it's about. It's about trying. And I think it's all worth it. And the more people don't believe in the underdog, the more opportunity there is. And history shows us that still holds true. Hope you guys enjoyed this talk. What a, what a time. What a time to be alive. What a time. What a, what a giggity.